Have you ever found yourself trapped on public transportation during peak hours, packed like a canned sardine, only to be suddenly hit by the unmistakable scent of sweat from the person in front of you? Such a situation can trigger discomfort and annoyance, especially when said individual turns out to be an incessant and obnoxious talker loudly conversing over the phone. And when someone tries to correct him, he rudely snaps back and continues his disruptive behavior. We've all been there. Dealing with rude and annoying people in various daily situations. They're everywhere. On buses, trains, on the streets, in eateries, at work, in traffic, and even in our private spaces. These troublesome folks come from all over the world and from every socioeconomic background. Some seem unaware of basic social etiquette, while others, despite knowing, choose to disregard them. So, how should we handle such individuals? Ancient Stoic philosophers offer some valuable insights. They often discussed how to engage with challenging individuals, addressing cases of treacherous relatives, neglectful parents, rude individuals in public baths, and those lacking manners and cleanliness in shared spaces. So, how should we behave around noisy and foul-smelling passengers, pesky co-workers, or even abusive or narcissistic people we encounter? This video delves deep into the issue of managing relationships with difficult individuals, including those lacking in personal hygiene, from a stoic philosophical perspective, supplemented with relevant personal anecdotes. Lesson 1. Epictetus and the lessons from Nicopolis. After being exiled from Rome, Epictetus headed to Nicopolis, a city in northern Greece, and made it his permanent home. In Nicopolis, he founded a philosophy school and had the chance to mentor a promising young man named Arian. Thanks to Arian, Epictetus's invaluable teachings were preserved for future generations as he compiled a comprehensive series of lectures and created a summary of the most essential lessons imparted by his teacher. One of these lessons highlights a core aspect of Roman life, bathing. Public baths were a prominent institution in the Roman Empire, and the bathing culture, inherited from the ancient Greeks, spread throughout the Mediterranean region. Bathing was not just an act of cleanliness, but also a social endeavor. Roman citizens frequented the public baths not just to cleanse themselves, but also to socialize, extend invites for social gatherings, and in the case of politicians, garner public support, even the affluent, who had the means to maintain private baths, were drawn to public bathhouses because of their social dynamics. These places provided a setting for physical exercises, social mingling, relaxation, and entertainment. However, as one can imagine, the diversity of patrons in crowded public places inevitably led to undesirable behaviors. Some bathgoers acted recklessly, splashing water on others, stealing belongings, or behaving as if they owned the place. Reading Stoic writings, one realizes that, in many ways, human nature has remained consistent over time, and challenging figures have always been around. Lesson 2 Epictetus' advice for dealing with troublesome individuals. So, what was Epictetus' advice for dealing with the troublesome individuals of his time? Epictetus advised his students to ponder on the essence of their daily activities. Each situation, like visiting a public bathhouse, has its unique characteristics. When visiting such places, one should already be prepared to confront adverse situations like people splashing water, chaos, offensive language, shouting, intimidating behaviors, or other nuisances. By understanding and accepting these intrinsic conditions of the environment, we won't be caught off guard when they happen. So, 
What does Epictetus counsel? He suggests that our focus shouldn't solely be on the act itself, like bathing, but on maintaining composure and emotional control amidst adversities. He said, you will act more appropriately if you remind yourself, now I'm going to bathe, keeping calmness and conformity with nature in my mind. And the same applies to any other activity. Thus, if any hindrance emerges during the bath, you will be prepared to think, my objective wasn't just to bathe, but to keep my mind in tune with nature, and I will fail in this if I get annoyed with the events that arise. Stoic perspective can similarly be applied to using public transportation. Ask yourself, what's the real nature of this activity? Do we always expect a peaceful, comfortable public transport with friendly individuals always arriving on time? Of course not. Anyone using this mode of transportation knows that while there are pleasant moments, they don't represent the entirety of the experience. There will be uncomfortable situations, such as noisy individuals, people with unpleasant odors, and even those trying to evade fair payment. How then would a Stoic use public transportation following Epictetus's teachings? The answer involves two parts. First, before leaving home, reflect on the nature of the public transport journey. Next, during the trip, focus on maintaining inner peace and serenity. When boarding a bus, be prepared for possible delays. When catching the train, be ready to handle grumpy staff and undesirable passengers. Lesson 3. Building a Stoic Community You've made it this far and have shown that you're genuinely committed to transforming your life with Stoic wisdom. Now, I want to invite you to join our incredible community of Serenity Seekers. Click on subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any powerful insights we share here. But before you go, drop a comment below with the phrase, I'm ready for the stoic transformation. I want to see who the true warriors of self-awareness are. And if you found value in this video, show some love by clicking on likes. It really helps to spread these valuable lessons to more people just like you who are ready for a life change. Thank you for being here, for dedicating yourself to your growth, and for being a part of this transformative journey. Lesson 4. Marcus Aurelius and dealing with challenging people. Marcus Aurelius, recognized as one of the great Roman emperors and a follower of Stoicism, also had to interact daily with a variety of people, including the most challenging ones. He dealt with arrogant, demanding, unjust, and dishonest individuals. Being an emperor was a monumental task, laden with responsibilities and pressures. Imagine yourself in the role of the most influential figure of the time, constantly the target of envy, with countless individuals wanting to usurp your place, while an entire empire relies on your decisions and leadership. Marcus Aurelius, in his quest for wisdom and inner tranquility, indeed used writing in his personal diary to reflect on various aspects of life and human behavior. His reflections covered topics like resilience and hard times, the purpose of life, human nature, and, of course, the challenge of dealing with difficult people. In the mentioned example, Marcus Aurelius provides a stoic perspective on how to deal with something as everyday and at the same time unpleasant as body odors. He reminds us that, instead of getting annoyed, we should use our reason and empathy to understand the situation and, if possible, help the other person become aware of the problem. Lesson 5 
Applying Stoic teachings to family relationships, this reflects a practical and understanding approach to Stoic teachings which encourage us to focus on what we can control, our reactions and actions and actions, and accept or empathize with what we cannot control, others' behavior. Regarding the issue of dealing with unpleasant behaviors in close people, like parents, Epictetus' teachings are again handy. He advises us to look at challenging situations from a different angle. Seeking that handle, we can carry, that is, the perspective that allows us to deal with the situation in a healthier and constructive way. This often involves focusing on the relationship's positive aspects or the person's good qualities, rather than dwelling on the negative aspects. However, as you rightly pointed out, there are situations where a person can be so toxic that the relationship becomes unsustainable, even trying to look on the brighter side. In such cases, it may be necessary to set clear boundaries or even distance oneself from the person to preserve one's well-being. The Stoics deeply valued inner tranquility and wisdom and recognized that, in certain situations, the wisest action might be to protect oneself from negative influences. Continuing on this theme, it's essential to remember that Stoic teachings don't encourage us to be passive or accept injustices without questioning. They encourage us to act according to our values and principles, always focusing on maintaining inner serenity and the right perspective on situations and people around us. However, they also recognize that there are times when the situation becomes unbearable and the wisest and healthiest decision is to step away. Lesson 6 the power of choice and stoic revenge. The key here is recognizing that we have the choice to stay or leave, and this choice should be based on a careful and rational assessment of the situation, not on emotional impulses. In the case of your relative, it seems you made a deliberate and considered choice to step away after a long period of tolerance and patience. This is consistent with Stoic teachings. Stoics don't encourage us to be passive or to indefinitely accept mistreatment. Instead, they teach us to recognize what is within our control and to act according to our values and principles, even if it means making tough decisions like distancing oneself from a familial relationship. Epictetus, in his lectures and teachings, often emphasizes the importance of recognizing our own agency and choosing how to respond to situations. In the excerpt you mentioned, he highlights that we shouldn't feel oppressed or miserable even in the face of challenging individuals because we have the power of choice. We can choose to stay and endure, or we can choose to leave. Your decision to distance yourself from a toxic family member wasn't an easy choice, but it was a demonstration of self-respect and recognizing your own worth. It was also a practical application of Stoic principles to recognize what is under your control, to act according to your values, and to seek serenity regardless of external circumstances. Lesson. 7. The Stoic Approach to Revenge and Inner Peace The Stoic approach you describe for dealing with challenging individuals and the temptation to seek revenge is profound and reflects timeless wisdom. Stoics believed we should focus on what is within our control, and our actions and reactions are certainly in that category. They also emphasized the importance of virtue as the highest good and believed we should strive to live in accordance with nature and reason. When it comes to dealing with challenging individuals, the Stoic approach can be incredibly liberating. Instead of allowing ourselves to be consumed by anger, resentment, or a desire for revenge, 
we can choose to respond with compassion, understanding, and when necessary, healthy detachment. This doesn't mean we should tolerate mistreatment or allow others to harm us. On the contrary, we can set firm boundaries and proactively protect ourselves. However, we don't let the actions of others disturb our inner peace or lead us to act in ways that compromise our values and integrity. Regarding revenge, the stoic perspective you shared is a powerful reminder that seeking revenge ultimately hurts us more than the person we are trying to punish. It's an act of self-sabotage as it takes us off the path of virtue and wisdom. Instead of seeking revenge, Stoics would encourage us to practice forgiveness, not necessarily because the other person deserves it, but because we deserve peace. Lesson 8. The power of Stoic perspective. The Stoic suggestion that I most appreciate is the idea that we can only be harmed by our own judgments and reactions and not by the actions of others. This perspective empowers us and reminds us that we have the ability to choose how we respond to any situation, no matter how challenging it may be. Understanding and practicing Stoic philosophy, especially in the context of difficult interpersonal relationships, can be a transformative journey. Stoics teach that we should learn to differentiate between what we can control and what we cannot. Our reactions, emotions, and decisions are within our control, while the actions and opinions of others are not. When we truly internalize this principle, we gain a sense of autonomy and peace as we are no longer slaves to circumstances or the behavior of others. If you're looking to take a further step in your development, I recommend the path of the Prosperous Stoic, the inspiring ebook that will unlock your prosperity and abundance. Link in pinned comment. Moreover, Stoic philosophy emphasizes the importance of living in accordance with our own nature and principles, rather than being driven by the desire for approval or fear of rejection. Lesson 9. Navigating narcissistic relationships with stoicism, this is crucial when dealing with narcissistic or toxic individuals like the previously mentioned family member. Stoics would remind us that another person's opinion of us does not define our worth and that we should seek validation internally by living in accordance with our own values and principles. The practice of distinguishing between what we can and cannot control is particularly useful here. Instead of trying to change the difficult person or seek revenge on them, which is outside of our control and will likely only result in further frustration, we can choose how we respond and interact with them. We can set healthy boundaries, protect our inner peace, and decide when and how to engage or not. Another relevant Stoic concept is amor fati, or love of faith. This practice involves embracing everything that happens in our lives, including challenges and difficult people, as opportunities to practice virtue and grow. Instead of wishing things were different, Stoics encourage us to accept and embrace reality as it is, trusting that in some way, Everything contributes to the greater good. Lesson 10. Embracing impermanence and stoic wisdom. Lastly, challenging situations and relationships are temporary, as are our own lives. This perspective can help us maintain a balanced view and not get lost in resentments or desires for revenge. Instead, we can choose to focus on the present practice gratitude, and seek to live in accordance with our values, no matter what others do or say. This stoic approach, when practiced consistently, can lead to a life of inner peace, integrity, and wisdom, regardless of external circumstances or the behavior of others. 
May you all be with the Creator.